subscribe ecofan for more educational videos welcome dear learners today we are going to discuss about the wetlands wetlands are areas where water covers the soil or is present either at or near the surface of the soil all year or for varying period of time during the year including during the growing season so basically wetlands are transition areas between dry uplands and aquatic systems or aquatic system may be the rivers lakes or oceans to be considered a wetland a region must have wet soil or be covered by a shallow layer of water for at least part of the year so water saturation largely determines how the soil develops and the types of plants and animal communities live in or on the soil in wetland areas so the prolonged presence of water creates conditions that favor the growth of specially adapted plants that is hydrophytes and promote the development of characteristic wetland or hydric soils so what is the importance of the wetlands why are uh, uh, wetlands so important first we will see the importance of wetlands with the lens of the animals so wetlands are among the most productive ecosystems in the world comparable to the rain forests or coral reefs they provide great volumes of food that attract many animal species from the base of the food web this ecosystem feeds many species like fish amphibians shellfish or insects many species of birds and mammals rely on wetlands for food water and shelter especially during migration and breeding seasons wetlands retain excess nutrients some pollutants and reduce sediment that would clog waterways and affect fish and amphibian egg development with the lens of the importance of wetlands with respect to humans wetlands filter the water that we swim in and get the food from basically various kinds of the reservoirs or the streams from which the water comes wetlands filters those kind of water resources from a sponge to absorb excess water and control floods and help in control of erosion that is the property of wetlands it supplies food wetlands are the nurseries for the food we eat such as fish shrimp crab and oyster and whatnot and it creates jobs many people in the area support their family by fishing shrimping or oystering and it supports the local economy many local businesses depend on the seafood industry for their revenue and at last tourism and sport fishing tournaments also rely on these wetland areas that provide us with recreational hunting fishing photography bird watching and whatnot taking few of the qualities of the wetlands first one it improves the water quality so wetlands plants and the soil is in the wetlands they act as a filters by trapping the pollutants as they move through the ecosystem so wetlands are also known as nature's kidney because they help to clean out pollutants that move through them they purify and filter contaminants uh, from agriculture activities so if the water eventually seeps into the ground underground water supply it is much cleaner than it when it entered into wetland basically the portion from which like this in this uh, picture it is illustrated a uh, stream of water comes with the polluted water when it enters into the wetland and the wetland acts as a buffer it removes the sediments pollutants pesticides and fertilizers by its various physical chemi chemical and biological processes and lets the uh, outlet of the water cleaner as compared to the inlet water so that's why the wetlands are called nature's kidney second one it 
provides flood protection. During the period of heavy precipitation, water often flows into low-lying wetlands. So, wetlands act as a sponge. They absorb heavy rainfall. And uh, those uh, located particularly on the coast serve as a natural barrier from the storm surges. They only does not act as a uh, flood protection but also acts as a protection from the storm surges. That may happen because of the cyclones or from the tsunami. So these wetlands can store excess water and prevent damage to the residential and commercial areas. So the storage of water is another property of the wetlands. The wetlands are the important storage of the uh, areas to collect the rainwater. Whatever is it is a very important component of wet uh, watersheds, wherein the various reservoirs they act as a storage of water. Some of the water soak into the ground and refill the aquifers like this. This act as a reservoir, as a wetland. It also recharges our groundwater as well as provides the water for the irrigation and drinking uh, to the <clears throat> adjacent communities or localities. It provides wildlife habitat. It provides shelter, nutrient-rich wetlands serve as ideal nursery areas for the wide variety of animals and also humans can visit wetlands to enjoy a number of outdoor activities like hunting, fishing, boating, hiking and bird watching. Basically, when it provides the habitat for the wildlife, certainly these kind of animals will be found in such kind of ecosystems. And it also provides an area of recreational. Humans can visit wetland to enjoy various outdoor activities like I discussed in earlier slide like hunting, fishing, boating, hiking and bird watching. So when we go for the discussion of the types of the wetlands, the wetlands have been broadly classified uh, into three types. First is swamps, marshes and bogs. Let us have a brief discussion about these wetlands. So before we further go in this lecture, I request all the viewers, please subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for being notified for the latest videos. So first one is swamps. A swamp is a wetland that is dominated by woody plants like shrubs and trees. Like in this, here is a water, it's a wetland and it is uh, having the woody plants like the willow or poplar plant. Uh, trees. Swamps are often near the rivers or streams. So it is adjacent to the rivers or streams. These rivers and streams sometimes flood the water into the flood uh, with nutrients into the swamps. So these streams ca they carry the nutrients into the swamps. And then marshes. Marshes is a type of wetland which is distinguished from the other wetlands variety by having an assortment that is the mixture of the grasses reeds sedges without large bushes and tall trees so here's the biggest ex uh, difference between marshes and swamps that is marshes have the grasses uh, as a plant community while as the dominant community in case of the flora in case of swamps is the woody plants a marsh can be salt fresh water and often has a large space of open water which which are he uh, heavily colonized by the birds. Marsh provides a vital habitat to many plant and animal species as well as protecting neighboring areas of uh, land uh, from flooding and in case of salt water marshes, excessive siltation. And last one is bogs. Bog is a wetland type that accumulates because of the deposition of the plant material. That is, uh, it mainly uh, provides uh, the moisture from the precipitation, from the rainfall, and the moisture and the, uh, the dead organic material gets accumulated over the period of time. So here the moisture only is from the rainfall, not from the streams or the lakes adjacent to the wetland. So this is the biggest example. So the box can only be found mainly in the areas of tropical areas where the rainfall is very high. So blueberries, cranberries, cloudberries are harvested in the box and pitcher plants are also found in the box. And 
another one is estuaries estuaries are potentially uh, closed bodies of water like we see this is a open uh, river and it, it is connected towards the sea and this is the intermediate kind of ecosystem between the fresh water and the salt water that is ocean water and it is called a brackish water kind of thing and it has salt concentration between the 5 percent to 5 uh, ppm so brackish water is a mixture of salt and uh, fresh water ashreen uh, environments are among the most productive uh, on earth many different habitat types are found uh, in and around the estuaries including shallow open waters fresh water salt marshes swamps sand beaches mud and sand uh, flats rocky shores oyster reefs mangroves forests river deltas tidal pools and sea grasses so main uh, the ecosystem in the estuaries are the uh, mangrove kind of plants next one is the classification of the wetlands first one is glaciatic wetlands these are basically uh, that wetlands are uh, developed because of the accumulation of water that is melted from the glaciers and uh, these basically these classification is based on the origin vegetation nutrient status and thermal characteristics of the water bodies so the glaciatic wetlands uh, have the example like somorori in uh, lake in uh, jammu and kashmir and chandartal lake in himachal pradesh Another one is tectonic wetlands. Basically, these are created because of the tectonic movements. And the examples are Nil Nag in Jammu and Kashmir, Khajar in Himachal Pradesh, and Nanital and Bhimtal in Uttaranchal. Another is Oxbow wetlands. Basically, it is a curved kind of thing, uh, crescent shaped. So, its example is Dal Lake and Wular Lake in Jammu and Kashmir. Loktak Lake in Manipur, some of the wetland in river plains of Brahmaputra and Indo Gangetic region, uh, Deepor Beel in Assam, Kabar in Bihar, and Surhatal in Uttar Pradesh. And the lagoons, these are having the examples of Chilka Lake in Odisha, Crater Wetlands, uh, example is the Loner Lake in Maharashtra salt lake or salt water wetlands it is the example pangong lake in jammu and kashmir that is in ladakh and saban lake sambar lake in rajasthan urban wetlands are the examples <coughs> <coughs> urban wetlands uh, examples like the lake in srinagar city of jammu and kashmir nanital in uttaranchal and bhuj in madhya pradesh Pond, tank, or man made wetlands, they are mainly in the Hyderabad, like the Hussein Sagar, Himayat Sagar, Usman Sagar, and Hariki in Punjab, Pong Dam in Himachal Pradesh. Reservoirs like the Ikudi, Hiraku Dam, Bakra Nangal Dam, and mangroves are the basically the forests or kind of ecosystem that is present in the estuaries. It is uh, Bhimtarkanika in Odessa, example. Coral reefs like in Lakshadweep. Creeks in Thane in Maharashtra. And sea grasses, that is one of the ecosystem in the estuaries. Uh, estuaries itself and thermal springs. These were uh, some brief uh, about the classification of various kinds of wetlands based on their origin, vegetation, nutrient status and the thermal characteristics so the thirds of the wetland ecosystem are the uncontrolled siltation basically the silt that comes from the incoming water streams that reduces the carrying capacity of the wetland then another problem is the weed infestation then uncontrolled discharge uh, wastewater from the adjacent areas maybe it is an industrial effluent or agriculture waste or domestic wastewater so another example is the encroachment the communities that live on the adjacent to the wetlands they slowly start encroaching the wetlands by filling and uh, building up residential or commercial apartments and then uh, they 
encroach the areas tree felling is also one of the uh, problems or threats to the ecosystem because it supports large kind of uh, bird that they can live on habitat destruction and leads to the loss of fish decrease in the number of migratory birds and uh, these are various kinds of the threats to the ecosystem that is wetland ecosystem so now when we talk about the restoration of the ecosystem so for the restoration of the ecosystem on the international level the ramsan convention was uh, basically adapted uh, in iranian city that is ramsar in 1971 and came force in 1975 since then 90 uh, percent of the united nation members have become contracting parties and uh, right now in india we have around 47 water bodies or we can say wetlands that have been uh, signed or that have been uh, uh, put under the Ramsar Convention protection. So the Ramsar basically works on work towards you know, wise use of all wetlands. Maybe it is for the food production or any kind of other activity. Then designate suitable wetlands for the list of wetlands and then international importance and ensure their effective management so first one is the protection laws so the several legislations have been enacted which have relevance to the wetland conservation these include forest act 1927 forest conservation act 1980 wildlife protection act 1972 and air pollution a prevention and control of pollution 1974 the water cess act 1977 and the umbrella provision of environmental protection act 1986 coastal regulation zone notification 1991 under the provision of environmental protection 1986 then the biodiversity act uh, 2002 and the biodiversity rules 2004 are aimed at safeguarding the floral and faunal diversity or biodiversity and regulating their flow from india to other countries from the reach uh, from the research for the research and commercial use then second one is protection <clears throat> the primary necessity today is to protect the existing wetlands there are thousands of wetlands that are biologically and economically important but have no legal status so we have to brought such kind of wetlands into the legal uh, umbrella then planning and managing planning managing and monitoring wetlands covered under the protected area network have management plans but others do not it is important for various stakeholders along with the local community and corporate sector to come together for an effective management plan active monitoring of these wetland systems over a period of time is essential several an inventorization survey and in, uh, inventorization survey and inventorization should take into consideration identification of different human activities effect of both industrial and domestic effluents and information obtained through remote sensing to be verified and uh, to be verified with the ground truth data for getting the proper status of the wetlands and the fourth one is coordinated approach since wetlands are common property with multi-purpose utility their protection and management also need to be a common responsibility an appropriate form for resolving the conflict of wetland issues has to be set up it is important for the ministries to allocate sufficient funds towards the conservation of these uh, ecosystems and it is imperative to have a multidisciplinary holistic and integrated approach for achieving long-term sustainable wetland conservation and management research the fifth one for the restoration of the wetlands there is a necessity for the research in formulation for the national strategy to understand the dynamics of these wetlands scientific knowledge thus gained will help the planners in understanding the economic values and benefits which in turn will help in setting uh, priorities 
and focusing on planning process. And the last one is the capacity building and awareness. So to create the awareness among general public, educational and corporate institutions must be established at various levels. Capacity building is a major tool in conservation activities and we need to have a good infrastructure, training people and case studies to teach values and functions, functions of wetlands in an integrated and multidisciplinary manner. So this was all about the wetlands. Uh, what are wetlands, what are types, classification and what are the problems and what is the ways, what are the ways for the restoration of the wetlands. I hope you all enjoy. Thank you.